Welcome to Kitchen Possible, where we push back the walls of the same old, same old and travel the culinary road of possibilities together as we learn to cook great meals in under 30 minutes or less. And as always, taste the love. And now your host and chef, Jerry Shoemaker. Welcome to Kitchen Possible. Today we are headed to Norfolk, Virginia to go to Autumn's house. She's my niece, she's in the Navy, serving our country. Thank you for your service to our country. Anyway, we are headed to Norfolk, Virginia today to cook in Autumn's kitchen. We're gonna make French toast souffle, and we're gonna make crab ragoon such as promised, and we're going to do it all in Norfolk, Virginia, the Virginia Beach area at Autumn's Kitchen. So follow us to Norfolk. That's right. Welcome to Kitchen Possible. Sorry it took us a few weeks to get this video out there, but now that we're back on track, look forward to some wonderful things yet to come. All right. Join us in Norfolk, Virginia. And remember, taste the love. Hi. Welcome back to Kitchen Possible. Today, we are at Autumn's house in Norfolk, Virginia, or the Virginia Beach area. That's right, my niece is in the Navy, and we, she has offered to give us her kitchen right here at Kitchen Possible, and we are gonna do the promised souffle. That's right, we're gonna do a French toast souffle right here at Kitchen Possible, and we're gonna show you exactly how to do that. It's real simple, and there's a little process, so pay attention, hold on to your seatbelts, and remember, don't cook anything the same old, same old. Extrapolate from your comfort zone. Push back the walls of the same old, same old. And get involved with your kitchen. Become one with your bread. Anyway, we're going to show you how to do that. And we're also going to go right into another show called How to Do Crab Ragoon. So, hope you got your seatbelt passing and let's have a good time. Remember, it's all about the love. So we're going to be right back to you in a minute. We're going to first show how to cut up the uh, bread, and then we're going to get into how to prepare it and how to put it all together. And then we're going to show you exactly how to put that in the fridge and let it soak up all that goodness. Ah, it's so wonderful. And then you're going to bake it in the oven. And let me tell you something. Everybody's going to get up in the morning and go, what is that? And you're going to say, your dog's getting ready to slap you in the brains. Hold that thought. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with any kind of bread you want. It doesn't make a difference. You can use Texas toast. You don't want to use soft, fluffy, moist little bread that you like. Uh, like my wife likes a peanut butter jelly sandwich and the bread's got to be nice and soft. You don't want that kind of bread. When you're, when you're talking a French toast souffle, you want a tough kind of bread. So these types of breads right here that you can get at Walmart for a dollar loaf. French bread, Italian bread, Texas toast. You want something meaty. It's going to soak up all that egg mixture that we're going to show you how to make. And when you do, it's not going to fall apart on you. You want to get nice meaty pieces. Now, I advised Autumn already that she needs to get a pair of kitchen chairs. Use bread that you got sitting around the house. You know how, you know how when you buy one of these, you don't quite eat it all. And you, you have a whole bunch left over. You, and it, it gets a little like you could not cheat rock all. Doesn't matter. Perfect. Welcome back. All right, now that you have your bread all chopped up and placed in these pans right here, uh, remember, I said you can use any type of bread you want. You can use Texas toast. You just need something meaty. Nothing soft because it's all going to fall apart and become mushy on you. You don't want mushy French toast. You would like good, hearty, awesome tasty French toast. All right. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to make up your battered mix to put in and pour over the French toast. And then you're going to refrigerate for a while. And then after we're done refrigerating, we're going to bake it off and we're going to show you the rest of it after we're done. All right. So what you're going to want to do is... Crack up a bunch of eggs. 
And if you're making two pans, you're going to want eight eggs per pan. You're going to make this mixture twice. I'll make one, then I'll do the other one without being on camera. So I'm going to put in eight of these eggs. Be sure you don't get any crunchy shells in there. Alright, there, there's eight eggs. Now you're going to whisk these up. Make sure they're nice and broke up and whisked up there, mixed up together. And then in this mixture, you're going to add some vanilla. That looks good. Remember, everything's based on your taste. You don't need to necessarily measure anything. Throw in a little cinnamon. And then you're going to get some heavy cream. Now, if I get a container this size from Great Value, from Walmart, that is, and I'm making two pans, I'll probably use half of this for each pan. Because I like it nice and creamy. And then, you're going to use some whole milk to top it off. Maybe a cup and a half or two. Step up here, Debbie, a little bit closer. And you're going to want to whisk this all together. Now the butter or margarine, whatever you depend on how you want to use, whatever you want to use, and flour and brown sugar is going to be our crumb that we're going to place on top. But once you mix this mixture up, you're going to pour it over each pan. And then you're going to refrigerate. Typically overnight. You're going to take this mixture and just begin to pour it. Trying to cover a lot of the pieces. You want that hearty bread to soak that up, that egg cream mixture, vanilla, cinnamon, cinnamon, bleh, cinnamon. Cinnamon. What's a cinnamon for cinnamon? <laughs> What's another word for cinnamon? <laughs> Goodness. Alright, you, you can see now that some of the bread is beginning to soak that mixture up, and that's what you want. And what you're going to do is you're going to cover this with saran wrap and place it in the refrigerator. If you can't put it in there overnight, you're going to put it in there for several hours. Alright, I'm going to do the second pan, then we're going to meet back here. And I'm going to show you how to do the crumb. And that will be your topping before you get ready to bake it. Okay? So we'll be back. This is the part on the top of the, on the, top of the French toast. You're going to want to take about... Eh, if you're doing two pans, you want to probably take about a cup and a half, two cups of brown sugar. Again, everything's on, based on your taste. And then you're going to want to add some flour. To your crumb mixture. Maybe about a cup, cup and a half also. I kind of eyeball everything. And you want to cut in some very cold butter or margarine, whatever uh, you desire to use. And at this time, I have margarine. And you want to be able to cut this in. So you want it kind of cold. Keep your sticks in the fridge until you're ready to use them. And you want to fold all this together to make a crumb. And you want to keep that in the fridge overnight as well. But if it's in the morning when you get ready to bake off your French toast souffle, you're going to want to crumble this all over the top and make a nice crumb top. My wife and all her 
friends at work really loved the souffle. That was the first time I made it, and I promised them that I would show them how to uh, prepare this. So that's what we're doing. Only we're in Norfolk, Virginia at my niece Autumn's house. And this uh, butter's not cooperating. Here we go. You're going to want this to come out kind of crumbly but moist. That's why you want your butter kind of cold when you mix it up. Sometimes you can get in there with your hands. Your best utensil in the, fr in the kitchen is a good pair of clean hands. And you're going to want to add some cinnamon to this mixture. And you're going to see your butter begin to flake. And that's what you want. It's all going to crumb together here shortly. And, that's, and there you have it. This is what you want. look over here you can see that our French toast bread our bread has begun to soak up this this egg mixture and that's what you want and that's good that's exactly what you want so whenever you pull these out of the fridge you're gonna put them in the fridge overnight and then when you pull them out of the fridge you're gonna begin after you heated up your oven you're gonna take this crumb sprinkle and you're going to sprinkle it all over the top here. Be generous. And I've dusted some cinnamon, cinnamon on the top of this as well. Now we just pulled these out of the fridge. So they're already nice and cold. They've all right. We're back. Guess what? We just got done pulling these uh, French toast souffles out of the oven. We're going to take a look at them just a minute. Boy, they, they smell really good. I'm telling you, your tongue will be slapping you directly in your brains. You need some hot syrup, a nice plate, and a hearty appetite. Here, let's take a look. And there you have it. French toast souffle right here in Autumn's Kitchen. Right here at Kitchen Possible. Now remember, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, be sure to email us at, at kitchen.possible at gmail.com. That'll be kitchen.possible at gmail.com. That's it. And be sure to never travel the, the culinary road of the same old, same old. That's right. Go crazy in your kitchen. It's your kitchen. Make a mess if you want to. And you know what? Cook exactly the way you like it. And be sure to Visit us on our uh, Facebook page, maybe friend us, give us your comments, we welcome your emails. If you have anything you would like to see us cook, send us your idea, your recipe, we'll quote you, we even give you a shout out, we'll put your recipe up there. And, and always, remember, taste the love. Okay, here we are, Kitchen Possible on the way back to our hotel room, and we are here with Autumn. What would you think of the souffle? That was so good. How about the lasagna cupcakes? Ah, uh, they're like really, really good. See, we got a few words from the driver that needs to be paying attention to the road. Thank you for watching Kitchen Possible. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Find our recipes at kitchenpossibleshow.blogspot.com. Don't miss out on all the fun at Kitchen Possible. Subscribe now and friend us on Facebook. And as always, taste the love.